For this part, we are going to cover lambda functions. And lambda functions are fortunately fairly simple. All they really are are single line, very simple functions. And the syntax for them looks like this. We have the lambda keyword, then we get whatever parameters we want to use, and then we have a colon, and at the end we have an expression, and this is the actual code. That's really all it does. It's a single line function if you have some very simple functions you want to work with and you don't really want to write a whole function. This, for example, could look like this, where we have lambda, then we have an x parameter, and inside of the function, we are just adding x plus one. And an important thing about lambdas is that the result of this expression, this one here, is returned automatically. Meaning when we are passing 10 in here, this lambda function returns 11 automatically. And I guess let's have a look at this in practice. This shouldn't be too hard. All right, once more, we have a completely empty Python file and I want to create a lambda function. And let's use the example I've just mentioned. So I have a lambda function and the one parameter I want to use is x. And what I want to return is x plus one. And this is then the entire function. How you would use this is by assigning it to a variable. And this variable now contains a function, meaning we can call it by using brackets again and passing in any number we want. Let's say a 10. And if I run the code now, we don't get anything because we have to print this value. Let me print it and we get 11. And that is the main idea of lambda functions. It's basically very, very simple functions that only consist of one line of code. I guess a slightly more useful one could be, let me copy this one here. Let's call this one simple calculator. And for this lambda, I want a and b. And all I really want to do is return a plus b. Meaning now I can call my simple calculator and pass in, let's say two and three. If I run this, we get five. Obviously right now, these examples are so simple that you wouldn't even create a function for it in the first place. I guess instead of this simple calculator, you just write two plus three and you would get the same result if you can type properly. So why would you ever use these kind of Lambda functions? And there are two main reasons that we don't really are going to cover in too much detail. The first one is that some functions want other functions as argument. And this is something we are going to see later. For example, Python has a sort function and this one sorts any kind of list. For example, a list like one, two, three, four, and five. And we could sort this if it was unordered. Let me mess it up a bit to something like this. To order this function, Python is expecting another function to tell it how to order this list. And this function would usually be a lambda because we don't want anything too complicated. We are going to cover this later on. The other examples where you see lambdas fairly often is with graphical user interfaces. And essentially what happens in there is that every button gets one lambda function because a button would only return a value like five, for example. So you don't really want a full function. You just want some very simple line of code that executes some basic thing when a button is being pressed. So this could be really useful, but for this introduction to Python, we are not going to cover it. But all right, with that, let's do an exercise and then we should be done with it. And for the exercise, I want you guys to create a Lambda function that accepts one argument that should be an integer. And if the integer is greater than five, return hello and otherwise return by. And then obviously, when you have created this, call this function and print the result. Let me comment out these Lambda functions here. And I want to create a new Lambda function that accepts one argument. Let's call this one X for the parameter name. And now I want to return hello 
if this x is greater than 5 and by if it is below 5. And for that, I want hello if x is greater than 5 and if that is not the case, so else, I want to print by. And this lambda function I now want to assign to a variable. Let's call it x, but it doesn't really matter what it is. And now I can print my x and pass in a 3, we get by. And if I pass in a 10, we get hello. And with that, we have covered lambdas. They honestly aren't that difficult and you really aren't going to use them that often. So don't worry too much about them. All right, next up, we have one final topic for functions that is actually really important, although it might not seem that much. 